Hello everybody, and in this video we are going to show how to upload um, a paper to, to archive. The idea is to make it easier, especially for students that they have never uploaded a paper before, in order to make it easier to, to to how to cope with some problems that archive can give in the in the process to, to submit a, a paper. So for instance, we are here in the in the website of archive, archive.org, and the first step that you have to do is to log in. In, in case that you don't have an account, it's just very easy to register. In, in, in case of register for the first time, depending, depending on the case, some, some, sometimes you need to have an endorsement. That means someone else that is already posting paper in archive has to kind of uh, recommend you for archive, but this is not the case in this case. So for instance, I'm gonna log in. Okay, so this is for instance, the, the, when you enter to archive, I'm gonna enlarge this page better. In order to see that, for instance, here when you enter your the first step, you're gonna see all your previous submissions to archive. And for instance, if you say, someone else send a paper in which you are co-author, you can claim the ownership of the paper. That means that in this list, it's gonna appear again, also. So, for instance, to start the new submission is very easy. You just start new submission. So, for instance, you have to certify that you are the same that you did. Here is re regarding, uh, let's say, authorship. That in this case, you have to put that I'm, a, I'm an author of the article that I'm submitting. Uh, the license, uh, license statement could be archive, or the typical is to put maybe the, the Creative Commons attribution license, this one. Or there are other types, but in any case, if you click on, on it, you are gonna see what is the, what implies the, this license. So, but you can read it later with more care. Okay, I put this one, the Creative Commons attribution license. Then you have to agree about the policy, and then after that, you have to choose in which class of Inside Archive you're gonna submit. In this case, since it's the stuff that I'm gonna upload is a proceeding that is related with high energy physics phenomenology, it's just to choose it. And then in this case, there is no subclass, for instance. Sometimes also I, I submit papers to astrophysics, and in this case, there is a subclass class. Uh, you can choose another, a different subclass among other types like astrophysics of galaxies, cosmology, and all so on. So, but in this case, since it's in, in high energy phenomenology, there is no subclass, so it's just one. So then we have to go here to continue. And now we have to give the file that it needed. Most of the cases is just to upload uh, the file in LaTeX. For instance, here I have my, the, the proceeding that I want to upload. So for instance, I can check that the, that the paper was compiled well. So the first step is to create, a, uh, in this case, is to create a target set with the files that, uh, that archive requires. So in this case, are just the, the text file, the BBL, the BIP, the BIP text, in which is containing the reference with the same name of the paper, of the text file, and other files like the styles and stuff like this. Also the figures, if you have it in a different folder. Then all of this, you have to create a, a tar file. And I'm gonna put here a name, and the, the proceeding, rock, tau. And once they are, the file is created, now you can see it here. We are gonna to upload it to archive in this case. I don't know why this was there, but anyway. So we upload the file, upload the file, and now it's gonna if all the files are up uploaded successfully, so it's just to continue. And now archive is gonna process the the, the latex and it's gonna see if we have problems. So in this case, we have a submission process process. Okay, so that means that the file didn't have any problem. This is special because sometimes big problem with the font. For instance, here we can see that there is no problem. I mean that the file that we submit was is, a, is producing a good PDF. But for instance, we can go back. In any time we can go back, what happened before? For instance, we are going to delete the, the, the file that we submit and we are going to generate one in which there are problems. For instance, I go to the source text, the source of the latex, and for instance, instead of doing this, I'm going to add this, this new DX font that I know that it produced problem, or at least it produces problems before. So in this, in this case, we're gonna again to choose all the files that we require and make a, a, the tar file, tar set. So choose it well. Okay, so okay, here, proceeding. Out. And we're gonna see what is gonna be the, the output of this. So here we have again the file. We go again to choose to upload. Upload file. 
okay, here again the same files, and now continue the process. And in principle, in this case, you're going to have an error. You know, you, you see here that it's reprocessed. You can check if it is a problem that the latex of archive was giving problem, but in this case, even though you check to reprocess, that means to compile again, it produces errors. And here, if you look into the output of the latex of, of archive, you're going to see what is the problem, and a beep and all, all the other stuff. So in this case, if you have this point, you have to go back, delete the files, and try to correct the problem that was producing in, the, in your latex. So now we go back, and since I, I just said that in this configuration was working well, uh, it's just a matter of, again, to, comp to make the tar file of the source files and su submit it again to archive. Compress, and then again, proceed in the cloud. Create archive set, close. And in this case, upload to the upload file. And now, continue the process. And the submission is okay. Again, we can check how is the, the output from archive, and we can see that everything is well. The, the plots and the references appear okay. So now we continue, and we go to add the metadata. metadata. So in this case, it is basically to copy paste from your from your source uh, the, the information, write the ty typo. Just check that everything looks fine. In principle, you can also put some uh, uh, latex uh, information, but it's better to avoid this because of to have to be more more nice for the website and stuff like that. So the author in this case is me, and then the abstract. In principle, you can the abstract you can save it in a different file in order to avoid to have some some latex code if it is the case. So in this case, the abstract. So we have to check well. If there is no latex, or for instance, the, the format is not the correct. Okay, this in this case was everything in one single line. That is the stuff that is required. Right here, that is YouTube with some code in in, in light latex. And yeah, okay, it seems okay. Now the comments. Since I okay, we're gonna uh, go to the uh, download and open the stuff to see the number of pages. Five pages. And here's this information. Five pages, uh, two fingers. And then uh, this is a proceeding, so for instance, we can go to, in this case, since I know the, what the people is putting in, in, in archive, let's see. I'm gonna check from another proceedings what is the information, and just copy paste. You know, to appear in the proceeding, blah, 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 blah. That is exactly the proceeding. appear in the proceeding. Report number in case if your institution is giving you a special number for, for papers. And journal reference and other information that in this case is not necessary because we are not submitting to a journal. So now, if everything is okay, you read it again and then save and continue. And now you're gonna have to see just to see all the information in a summary, what is happening. You can see again the article if you are not sure, but we already checked it many times, so in principle there is no problem. But just in case, if you are paranoid that maybe something could be wrong, you just check it again. So, and, the, and this stage, okay, we check that this high energy physics phenomenology. Okay, at this stage, if we press here submit, it's gonna be sent to archive. This this stage is very important if you want to submit it before, or just after when the they release the the time of an archive. That means, for example, here in Europe, or in case if you are in a different part of the world, you have to enter to time archive. And you can see here what is the time in which archive make the next release of the papers. I mean, until what moment you can submit paper, and then it's going to appear to the next day, for instance. So, for instance, in this case, uh, the time we still have to wait for instance 10, 10 hours and a quarter if we want to appear first in the next list of archive. But since at this point we don't care, we just can safely put uh, submit, and and that's all. So now it's it, it has sent to archive. So for the moment it's processing, and in this processing we have to wait. In this case, since I submitted before the 10 of the uh, of the night p.m., it's gonna appear just tomorrow, like in the middle of the list of uh, FPH. So and then we have just to wait, and you're gonna get with an archive number, and everything is gonna be okay. At this point, if you, everything is, is is ready, just we need to log out. 
and like this is the way to submit a paper to archive remember that all this stuff if you want to be fast maybe it's better to point on to save the, the information of the abstract uh, authors and and title in a different file just to be be fast mm -hmm. to just make copy and paste so if there is no you have a question it's quite simple no i think so okay so if not there is this is the faster way to do it i hope it is good for you and make it easier to 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 submit paper and to submit fast without any problem okay